It made a fixed point on my landscape, somewhere that I could go and enjoy myself in safety and in company and take exercise. Governor Bath's Community Trust was born out of a, a powerful campaign to save the Governor Hill Baths from closure in 2001. Our goal has always been to reopen the bars as a wellbeing centre, but also to contribute to the regeneration of Govan Hill through grassroots activities. The baths and the wash houses were corporations' answer to the problems of health and hygiene and sanitation in an overcrowded Victorian city. The first swimming pools were little more than big, big baths where as many people as possible could be cleaned quickly. By the time Glasgow had the power to build the, the municipal baths and wash houses, you, you had uh, facilities for swimming, for bathing, and for washing under one roof. The introduction of wash houses really transformed the working day for women particularly because they didn't have to rely on the back court wash houses anymore. You could go and wash your clothes anytime you wanted, anytime you needed. Really tr transformed their lives socially as well. There was a real sort of spirit of cooperation that really developed from that. Govan Hill was one of the best at the time, one of the most well-equipped baths that had been built by Glasgow Corporation at that time. And they shouldn't knock down things like this. They should be preserved. It's part of Govan Hill. It is Govan Hill. The baths is what Govan Hill was. And I think it's just marvellous that they're doing it. Most people in Govan Hill uh, just took for granted, really, that the baths were going to be there forever. Um, so when we saw the newspaper article in the Evening Times, there was a, a wave of shock throughout the whole community. So very quickly from that announcement, we organised a very vibrant community meeting and decided very early on that the Save Our Pool campaign um, was going to occupy the building. And that occupation was more than just a symbolic act. It was about securing the building for the future. Occupy, occupy, occupy. Name a pie in the sky when we die. Like birds or a feather, we'll all stick together and shout as we go, occupy. Because I never ever thought I was militant, but I was so angry with the council that anything we did helped the whole pool. You've no idea the people who, who came and helped and handed in things and stuff. We were a community, all just one community. Nobody cared where you came from as well, and everybody helped. And as the campaign developed uh, and it became clear that the council were not interested and were never going to run the building um, as a community facility, as a, uh, a swimming pool, um, the trust decided that, well, if, if the council's not going to do it, then we'll do it. So yeah, when we got into the building um, and so many people wanted to come and run their activities there, I think for us it really demonstrated a need within the community to have those places to meet, um, have those places to, to hold their events um, and come together as organisations. As a community-based anchor organisation, we run a wide range of programmes and projects based both on the needs of what our community wants, but also our aspirations. And that includes projects from upcycling and environmental issues right through to health and wellbeing. A, an organisation that is very locally based um, that is driven by the needs of the community and can respond to the need within the community. They are like a big brother and small brother to us. 
and we have a very good relationship and the relationship has really progressed. They are just building our knowledge and strengths of how to do things and how to be self self sufficient and how to stand our feet. That that's that's basically it. We set up to break down the barriers because other youth club services in Govan Hall, you have to meet a certain criteria to attend these clubs, whether it be to culture or age. Um, at our club, you don't actually need to meet any criteria, just that you're a young person living in Govan Hall. And we deliver the projects that they want to take part in. It's totally up to them what they're doing. We never force young people to take part in activities that they don't feel comfortable with. We will find a way around to make sure that we accommodate to their needs. So Rags to Riches is an upcycling project that was set up by Govan Hill Baths Community Trust about 10 years ago now. The aim of the project was to rescale our local community by providing workshops and other activities and to divert waste from landfill and to also increase the local and circular economy in the area. We work in a really supported environment that encourages people to help each other. One day when we were walking past the Govan Hall Baths, we ended up just going in uh, just to see how the progress was going to be with the, with the actual baths. And through talking to Fatima, uh, we, we told her that we had a group herself and basically the answer when she told us that they might be able to help us. So. It was just basically for some somebody to have a safe space to come maybe felt a bit lonely, isolated, mental health. It's our belief that, you know, whatever your, your class, your race and so on, you, you have the right to experience amazing culture. And um, our primary audience will always be the, the people of Govan Hill. Something that's very important for the Baths is bringing that world class art to the community and ensuring that it is accessible, but it's of a very high quality. And we really believe that art is some, uh, something very useful for social cohesion. came obvious very, very quickly that the poor were going to get poorer, the people who were the most vulnerable were going to suffer the most, um, particularly communities uh, such as the BME community and those, the elderly community and so on. Um, it is tough for everyone. I can say we are the ones who are really feeling the heat. It is really struck as on the face. They are give, given us the wheels to go for it. They give us training and capacity building. The People's Pantry offers people in the Govan Hill area support with food. Uh, so anyone can become a member for 350 a year and they can then do a weekly shop for 250. That's like all the same issues as every other area of Glasgow and probably Scotland as well but there are bigger issues here and because of that people do need a bit more support for things like food. So many people uh, lost their income, they, uh, they weren't given enough support by the government generally, uh, often because they were self-employed, uh, they might have been getting paid cash in hand. Uh, so there are just a huge number of reasons that life got a lot more difficult for a lot of people during the pandemic and our income was really lowered. Uh, and that's one of the reasons we thought the pantry was really good in Govan Hill. We've also done craft packs which we've been sending out to the community. So they have got bits and pieces of equipment that are essentials like a decent pair of sharp scissors, it, making up instruction sheets and with the videos sometimes to complement that as well. A lot of people were struggling with food poverty and we were able to get food packs together and deliver them to young people and we put it out as um, a food cooking challenge. So young people were able to cook with their families um, while taking part in a challenge and this gave them life skills as well. Helped bring them together closer as a family because during lockdown a lot of people were struggling to even sit in the same room as each other as they were stuck in, but this allowed people to have fun. 
the wellbeing programmes, particularly aimed at people who are not currently working or in full-time education, receiving benefits. It's for anyone living within a mile of Govan Hill Baths. When I think back of March, it was just this sort of um, a real mixture of things of this, like, you know, obviously everyone's in shock and sadness and dealing with their own personal issues around lockdown, but also this real uh, camaraderie and this people coming together and just a real creative explosion of, of ideas and activities. The gardens have been such a blessing because of the COVID. Five of us have been going there on a Wednesday with Stuart from Urban Roots building a fire and... It wasn't so much actually doing the gardening. It's more just going and getting myself out the house and having a laugh with everybody and stuff like that. We have a very strong uh, structure of governance to ensure that the building remains in community ownership in perpetuity. It can never be privately bought, it can never be privately used or sidelined. It's going to be there for the community as their uh, local asset. It's going to be huge access to the building, uh, to the leisure facilities, exercise facilities, something that's really uh, lacking locally, um, especially swimming. We're going to really try to employ as many local people as possible, speaking as many community languages as possible. So that's going to have a really um, great effect on the local area. this amazing like custom built pantry space uh, in the baths uh, which will be really really fantastic because they're going to have a community garden in the back where we can grow produce for the pantry. Our community now owns these beautiful baths again but this is not an end in itself and now we are creating a community network which takes that idea forward generated and driven by local people. They underestimated how important the bath was to people and how, how much affection there was for that building, that important building right in the heart of the community. It was built for the people of Glasgow um, and it should remain for the people of Glasgow. When the Govan Hill Bath reopens, I think I'll be the first in there and I will be going, hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs>